Okay, do, do you want to take the first uh, question, Steph? Yeah, I will. And the first question is, um, what does the circular economy look like in the social sciences and what data do we contribute? And I'd like to pass the floor first to Jan, then to Anna and then Konstantinas. Thanks very much. Right, thank you. Well, I guess the, the type of surveys that I presented uh, briefly is at least a very important part of what we can contribute with the types of surveys where you can see um, more about people's attitudes towards recycling um, uh, a lifestyle that is actually environmentally correct. Uh, and again, also the self-reported uh, behavior. I think those data sets are important, but as I also said, if we can find data that can help us figure out if there is a gap between people's attitudes and self-reported behavior, as opposed to the actual behavior and what actually happens, that will make our contribution uh, even, even better. But I think that the surveys combined with government data, if at all possible, is, is something that can help research in circular economy. Also, I guess a point to be made uh, here is that what we do in the archives is actually a form of circular economy, because what we do is we preserve data that has been created for reuse so that other researchers can, can benefit from insights that have already been made in other types of research. So that's also, I guess, a point in, in ter terms of what we can do in recycling and, um, and circular economy. Yeah, thank you very much. So, yeah, so I'd like to stress here how then the researchers can use the says the archives to um, to really push forward the research boundaries on, on the circular economy and to help close the loop. Um, Anna, what would be your take on this question? Yeah, so I agree with Jan. So I think especially the last point he made, so that, you know, with uh, increasing the use of data, that's also part of the circular economy and uh, saving the resources, because I think a lot of resources by researchers are spent on unnecessary data collection. And I think it would be much better to optimize these processes and make the use of secondary data. So more data sharing and more reuse of data, uh, because this is also something that's friendly to, because it's um, we, this way the researchers, they spend less resources. And uh, so I think it's very important to focus on the reuse. And then another point I would like to make is that um, uh, that maybe so um, the data that is currently available, um, so the survey data that is currently available, um, it's uh, focusing mostly on uh, these uh, consumer issues. And I think it's important also to not focus just on the end consumers, but also more on the behavior of enterprises because with, uh, what the enterprise are doing, are they, it has a big effect. And sometimes, so the decisions made by enterprises can affect them what the end consumer is doing. For example, if we look at in supermarket in the availability of reusable bags, this is an example. So it's, it's not just the consumer choices that are important, but it's also important to understand the enterprises and how we can motivate, incentivize enterprises uh, to, to embrace this circularity. Yes, thank you very much, Anna. Yeah, so this is something that you mentioned also, Konstantinas, in your uh, presentation. So what would be your viewpoint here on this, on question number one? Um, I would say that um, the, the circular economy in the social sciences uh, doesn't uh, actually uh, mean that uh, it's only for social science. Um, the data on circular economy and the data related to circular economy is not only is, uh, uh, social science oriented. It has many aspects, uh, many, many technical aspects and many uh, other aspects that the social scientists need to understand because the uh, circular economy is a very new topic and uh, not really defined yet. Uh, there are several uh, definitions. There are, there are papers in the literature that they mention about 140 something definitions in circular economy. So 
actually the in the social sciences it's nothing to differ from other sciences i think the most important is that people need to understand and be educated and understand what is a circular economy which in short is 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 an economy that considers more uh, more issues about resources so i don't think that we should uh, go away from from what we know so far we don't need to reinvent the wheel uh, we just need to to adjust this new topic under the new conditions and the new knowledge we need to know uh, so we collect correct data and when we ask people about uh, situational economy data they they really understand what we are asking for Thanks a lot, uh, Constantinos. I think that's very interesting uh, that you mentioned it. This is a new topic. This is not only one discipline. This is very wide. Uh, and it's a new topic that needs a new definition uh, because there's already so much. Uh, there's so many papers already about this. Uh, I think that's really interesting. Thanks. Uh, then I would like to go to the next question. How can CESDA help or, or is already helping to make official statistics more user friendly as uh, the barrier that Anna had uh, had presented in her uh, presentation? I would like to, to ask Johanna and Jan to, uh, to take this question. Johanna, maybe you want to go first? Okay, I will. Uh, I must say in this, th this question, I have only, only one point, but I think it's very important because I don't have the exact picture about how it is in every individual European country. I have my personal experience from the Czech Republic and we have kind of a problem with official statistics. Like we have uh, official, the, the Bureau of Official Statistics. And the problem for researchers is that they don't have information about the, the data the statistical office have. So I want to say that statistic that the CESDA service providers should disseminate the metadata and the data documentation documentation about the data that statistical office have. Like uh, here in Czech Republic, you know that there are certain data sets available from the statistical office, but you don't get any any information about the number of, uh, I don't know, number of respondents in the simple. You don't even know what are the issues covered in the data set. You really have no basic information about the data set, the information you need. So I think that the role of Czech social science data archive or maybe other archive in, in the Europe is to make some deal with statistical office and disseminate and share the metadata, the data documentation of the data the statistical offices have. Thanks, Anna. Jan, what's your take on this? Well, it's from, from it, another country perspective as well. Yeah, from another country. Yeah, it's very hard to be uh, to disagree with Johanna because obviously metadata is really at the core here. That whatever we can do uh, in CESTA to um, enhance the metadata that are, are available for researchers, the more reuse we will see of the data, uh, including also the data from, uh, from statistics. Um, so metadata, both on the level of what you can find in the catalog, but also metadata uh, on the level of uh, the more detailed level you will get when you uh, access the actual data is really uh, important and should be an area of focus for, for CESTA as it already uh, is, of course. And then uh, another idea could be for, the, for CESTA to, uh, to help disseminate stories, like case stories about how people have used uh, data so that you can get the inspiration from other researchers. Because I guess from, at least from our perspective, this is something that we see often that researchers they really inspire each other. So if there could be some way we could um, we could help promote that in, in a CESTA framework, I think that might also be part of the, the answer to this question. Thanks, Jan. I think that's a very nice point you're making. Uh, for this, I also want to thank Anna and Konstantinos being with us uh, today that they have already shared their uh, their story. So uh, we're, we're looking for more stories. So I think, Jan, that's a, that's a nice point you made. 
uh, that we can link to. So if people have used the DMAC or the data catalog, we're really interested in hearing uh, yet more stories uh, to yet inspire more people. Um, Steph, next question uh, back to you. Yeah, thanks very much. Yeah. So based on the presentations earlier, how would you describe the societal as impact of research data used for circular economy studies? And this question is for Anna and Jan. Thank you. Anna, if you'd like to go first. Um, yeah, no, so I'm sorry, I'm just thinking because I, um, so I think it's, it's, it's a bit hard to respond to this uh, question. Uh, uh, so what is the impact on society? So I can maybe only say that um, it's an important research topic um, because of the relation of circular, circular economy to the environment. Um, and uh, of course, people are aware of this issue. So I think it's important to have even more research of this topic. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, it's also important to, um, to incentivize researchers to also make, so to reuse this data. Um, so because this data can have a great value and impact on, uh, um, Thank you. Thank you, Jana. Anna. Um, Jan, what would be your viewpoint on this question? Mm. The, the types of surveys that I mentioned, they include a lot of information about people's attitudes and viewpoints. And I, I think one really interesting aspect seen from society's point of view is that we can get some really powerful insight in the interaction between people's opinions and the policies that are enacted, enacted the legislation that is formulated um, based on this type of data, because if we see a change in regulations for environment, so to speak, is that because we have seen a change in attitudes in the electorate among the people that the politicians then react upon? Or do we see enactment of legislation as a prerequisite for changing people's attitudes? Now, that type of research would really help us understand the interaction between people's views, the, the, the opinions of the people, so to speak, and the policies that are actually enacted. What comes first? Who has to do something for us to move in the right direction in, in terms of new types of lifestyles, et cetera, uh, for this particular uh, issue? Yeah, that's a very interesting point. Thank you. Um, over back to you then, Marika, for the next question. I don't know how many questions there are in the in the chat. I can't see that. I don't know if they if they have been addressed already or. Yeah, we're on question four on on your slides now, breaking down the barriers. But in the in the chat from the audience, there's no questions that we need to answer now at the moment. No, no, we've answered them all. So thank you. Okay, that. great. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so then over to question four. How do we break down barriers on reusing statistical data for cross-disciplinary research on circular economy? I think this question is already slightly answered. Johanna and Jan, you, 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 met, you already took quite a stab at this one, uh, but maybe um, Anna and maybe also Konstantinos, you, you want to contribute to this question. Konstantinos, do you want to start with this one? Yes, uh, yes. Um... Um, actually, the, the answer to this question is cooperation, uh, is a multidisciplinary uh, cooperation, but this has to be done before collecting the data, of course. And uh, this is, uh, uh, and, and also is important because there are, as I said before, because there are new terms, uh, we need to agree on this uh, terminology, on the indices we are uh, collecting. And when we ask about the uh, circular economy, exactly what we are asking for. So I, I add here an issue of education at all levels, uh, not only at the primary school, but also at the university level. So we all uh, speak uh, under the same understanding when we are talking about circular economy. Thanks, Kosantinos. I think this is a very nice uh, moment for Johanna to enter as well, because Johanna, I think you are uh, you are active in the CESA training community as well. Um, 
or at least you 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 train people that come you you educate people in data management uh, in the national service uh, in the SESDA uh, national service provider yes uh, yes i do <laughs> but we, we mostly prepare the the guides the, the text for uh for that that should be disseminated more so uh, our idea is that we will we prepare a central guide that includes lots of information and that it will be later used in uh, uh in higher education at the instruction at the universities and so on and we we, we want to make the uh the text we make very friendly to to so we, we want people to understand as much as possible. So I uh, uh, anyone anyone can use these tags, and I think that's uh, it could be, uh, for example, the data management expert guide I've been talking about in my presentation. I think that's a kind of a material that can be used not only by social researchers but also by economists, uh, biologists, uh, people from many many domains, and they can still understand it. So that could be something how to break uh, the, the the barriers to use uh, uh, the use the the material that is uh, comprehensible to 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 many different people. So says that can help this way that we could try to disseminate this material to different uh, different audiences. Thanks, Johanna. Anna, do you want to contribute uh, to this question? So how do we break down the barriers? Uh, yes, so as I mentioned in my presentation, so maybe one way of doing that is um, to, um, to, to understand these issues that researchers have with current data, but also there is the bigger issue that a lot of researchers are not even aware of this possibility, so I think there should be some awareness raising activities among researchers for researchers that uh, this data is available that they can reuse it because there is some bias among researchers that they think that primary data collection is somehow superior and that using data for, uh, that was collected by other it has a lower value and is less publishable. So maybe there should be some awareness raising activities um, to promote so that researchers are even aware that they can look for data and that they can reuse data. Thanks, Anna. Steph, um, I'm not sure if we if we have time for the for the last question or if we should start uh, with the poll and, and the closing of the session. Uh, we have five minutes left. Yeah, OK, I'll do the poll and then we'll, we'll wrap up maybe with a takeaway from each of the panelists. Exactly. Let's turn yeah. the fifth question on to uh, an action. Yeah. So here's the first poll and it's about using the data, um, so the data catalog and we're asking you if you because we've got a lot of newcomers to says on this call this afternoon so would you now consider using the data catalog based on what you've heard this afternoon i'll give you a few more seconds okay well i think we can start closing it so i'll end the poll at 40 seconds, which is now, um, and I will share the results. So we have made a difference because a lot of 67% of the respondents said they would probably use it. So thank you everyone for um, to all the participants for, for re responding to this survey. We've got another one coming up now, and this time it's about the data expert management guide, and it's exactly the same question. Would you now consider using this to manage your data, and we heard from you, Anna, about the processing uh, of the data. And it's got a, there's a there are useful tips here on the on the DMEG. So thank you for voting. We'll count a little bit longer. Okay, I think we're near the threshold hold. So I will now end the poll and show you the results. And it's very similar to the one about the data catalog. So thanks very much everyone for responding to these short polls. Back to you, Marika. 
Thanks, Steph. Uh, so, as we said at the beginning of this uh, this roadshow, uh, it's the fifth and the final. Uh, just wanted to share with you uh, that we've done a roadshow on COVID nineteen, uh, the global challenge, a global challenge on migration, climate change, cancer, and chronic disease, and today on circular economy. We've addressed five global challenges where uh, says that can help you in your research uh, with social scientific research uh, tools. Uh, we've had uh, the, the, the pleasure to work with 31 speakers, but even much more uh, people involved, uh, obviously behind the scenes, uh, such as the, the CESDA main office. I really want to thank them for their cooperation, their, their efforts uh, and their, their energy, uh, especially uh, also in the social media promotion around this and the coordination of all this, uh, this full series. Uh, we were happy to uh, have 200, more than 200 people registered to the full uh, series, and we've we've been able to to uh, showcase 15 user stories, which is I think a very nice. Uh, it's, it really links back to what Jan said earlier: share experience, share the user stories um, that are out there to inspire uh, further uptake and um, of these uh, of these really useful tools for researchers. Um, Steph, I think it would be nice to close off with a call to action from all our speakers that have been. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So maybe, uh, Jan, do you want to uh, start with a nice call to action to all the people on the call uh, for their research in circular economy and beyond? Well, first of all, I would like to say how impressed I am with the, the potential that we have here. So I would like to for everyone to just wrap the opportunity to share your research, but also to make use of other people's research uh, using the resources that we have in the SESTA data catalog and, and uh, elsewhere in the SESTA infrastructure. Thanks, Jan. Johanna, what's your call to action? Oh, I, 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 don't, I don't even know what to say. I just want to encourage everyone to use DMAG. I think that's all, all from me. Great. Thanks, Johanna. Anna, what's your call to action to the people on the call? Um, yeah, so maybe I'm, I'm repeating myself, but maybe I will just say, um, um, so I recommend, so even if I presented issues with uh, data use, I still think it's important to use data and I will encourage, I would encourage other researchers uh, dealing with these topics to make, uh, to try to, to, um, to do more studies where they reuse uh, data that is already available. To reuse. That's very really nice. Thanks, Anna. Konstantinas, do you want to give us the last call to action? Um, I would like to say that uh, social uh, social uh, studies and social scientists uh, need to cooperate uh, more at this uh, in this topic. A circular economy was practiced from the engineering side. All this uh, um, uh, circular economy boom that happens now. Uh, it, it, it has been practiced in the past and in the very past, uh, if we talk about uh, several years ago, but now is the time to cooperate with social scientists because this is uh, the most uh, important and the most interdisciplinary section uh, of, uh, of